meeting to a, to order and if you'll all rise Miss Escobedo Badola if you'll lead us in the oh in the <laughs> pledge of allegiance please I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the, of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, God indivisible with, with liberty and justice, justice for all thank you School Committee Chair Report, that would be me. I want to thank all of the participants on Saturday for Miss, Miss Jeffrey's scarecrow endeavor. I'm told by, uh, by committee, committee woman, uh, Melissa Fleming, that there were how many? A thousand four. A thousand four. Let's have a round of applause for that. Yes. That's, yes. I, I stopped in there Saturday morning and... There was uh, <laughs> Principal Renda drilling into the ground with his electric drill, yeah. <laughs> making, making uh, the holes for the scarecrow uh, posts. So, uh, yeah, that was um, a lot of work. We appreciate it, and maybe, maybe next year we'll we'll break that record. We need. They got a thousand. A thousand four. Four, and they needed four thousand. They needed. Well, 3,000 uh, something, right? 12 was the right. But right. next year, well, I think what my thought was that maybe they should put these into storage, start mm -hmm. it in August next year, yeah. and okay. maybe we'll have a <coughs> 38, 15. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, our resource committee, uh, Mr. Stevens. Nothing at this time. Thank Are you. We, or, oh, or that would be... Yeah. Uh, no, under school building needs, I will. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, next. Well, that's school next. Building Go ahead. Needs. Yeah. Uh, we're going to meet Thursday afternoon, Mr. Jokler, at uh, Crocker yeah. Elementary uh, to discuss the roof uh, at one thirty. Crocker uh, roof. Yeah. Good. They're, they're currently working on the Crocker they're, roof. Yeah, they're, they're just starting that today. This yeah. is the MSBA yeah. uh, visit. So visit. Visit yeah, coming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, chairman, uh, Chair person Cragen policy committee yeah we had a really really good meeting on I believe it was Thursday and uh, we have before you a, um, a policy which I'm going to ask members of our policy committee committee uh, Juana and Marisa if we can just do our policy vote on this um, before and this would be also requesting coming uh, doing this out of order so we do have we do have to approve this as a full committee but it needs to go through our policy uh, subcommittee first so since we do not have it on our action items, yes, we do. Number 16 744 1617. Um, I'm going to ask if we can take, um, we, we can certainly wait until then and pass it as a full sub, as a, as a subcommittee and then a, a full full committee if that, if that works for everyone. And again, this is in our packet. It's the teaching and intervention, alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. Um, we are also going to, this will also take the place of one of our policies, which we found by perusing, and I, I feel like the public should see this more often. So this is our policy book, so approximately three inches. And this comes with the Mass General Laws. This is only Mass General Laws on schools, so it's a solid inch. It's very tiny type. So we did find in our policy book a policy that would be totally redundant with this new policy. This has to do with uh, the curriculum that we do. And I think, um, may I ask, uh, Juana and Marisa, did you have a chance to review um, everything that our principal sent? Yes. yes. I just did it earlier. Great. Okay. So that's our policy. We're, um, that's the policy before us tonight. We will be figuring out a meeting time for next time and then um, moving forward on some other other policies that need some updating. Anything else to add, Marisa and Donna? No? Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, and I want to also, I want to thank Patty Pickers because she she's um, the superintendent's administrative assistant and man, she is on top of it all. So without Patty and without Paula G. Quinto, um, we're, we're getting our feet wet on some of this. So we, we really thank, you know, the both of you for helping guide us because this is the, this is this is how the school runs this I don't know seven pound binder and how many pounds of children and grown-ups but we all move together so thank you 
Thank you. So, Ms. Craig, we have yep. we have a, a, a policy already then we on the books. So Correct. we're going to have to. Uh, well, what we're going to, yeah, what, what we'll do next time is we're going to pass this because there's a deadline in question. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, I, we don't have to do multiple readings on deletion, do we? Because it's, we don't. It's, if I might, please share. Uh, yes. The last statement in this is cross reference school committee policy 5404. This new policy will replace 5227. Okay. That's what I was, okay. So it's yeah. right here. All right. I knew we had to do a, some work on that. Yeah. So we lose a page and we gain two pages, but that's okay. Okay. It's important stuff. Any further questions? Um, Ms. LaBelle Pierce regarding student support committee, subcommittee, I should say. There's nothing new to report. We will meet again on November 7th. Thank you. School personnel committee, uh, Mr. Jokla, we're still in the, in the process of negotiating with the uh, nutrition folks. Mm -hmm. Still yes. ongoing. Yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I have to report. Um, what do we have left? Student report. We have no student report tonight. Okay. But I, I think oh, our yeah. I think our students are. Uh, I know they're very much involved in athletics, and I know there were games today and tonight, so they're probably. The game. Okay. I know there's a soccer game at uh, Crocker Field right now, and the uh, Miss Velasquez is on volleyball, and they were playing this afternoon, uh, which five o'clock I think they start. So. We have active participants. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, before we go any further, I'd like, I'd like to ask us all in the viewing audience at home for a moment of silence with the loss of a Fitchburg student, 23 years young, uh, taken uh, much too young, uh, Tyler Dupree, whose uh, services were held today. And if uh, you would, uh, a moment of silence at his passing. Thank you. Uh, staff student presentations. Okay. Um, seems like the summer was a long time ago. But uh, it was, it did come, and it was an exciting summer, and we had camp journeys, and I'm going to have um, Eva Kelly uh, come up from Camp Journeys, and I was going to do all of the names, but I'm going to let you do the names, that way you're sure, and they're all there. So students will be joining us, add chairs if you have to, uh, but it's important that the names of these students get said loud and clear so everybody at home knows who they are. They can just. There are people here listening to you, and then there are all kinds of people at home watching you on television. So, we want them to know who you are. Thank you, Dina. So, why don't we start with each of you introducing yourself? Hold on, Miss Eva. Can you stop that for a minute so they can talk first? Yeah. So introduce yourself and which school you're from, okay? So Molly, you said. Hello, my name is Molly and I'm in the third grade. I go to the school at Vine. We study the ocean at Camp Journeys. We learn about animals like starfish and sand dollars. Sand dollars were my favorite thing to study. My favorite activity was writing poems because I like to be creative. My favorite field trip was the beach because we collected shells in my dad camp. I've been to Journey's Camp for three years. I really like Journey's Camp. I, 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 like, I really like Journey's Camp. And we have some of Molly's journals going around and okay. some nice. um, artifacts from all the students that attended. This is Rembrandt Tebow, and he uh, goes to Ryan Gold Elementary School, third grade, and he has a few words to say also. Hey. My name is Rem. I've been at Camp Journey for three years. It really helps you learn. Every year there's a new topic. 
topic. This year I learned about the ocean. We went to the aquarium to the beach in North Aquarium and there's farmland. At Crocker School we went <coughs> on hikes. We read stories about the ocean. We got to do things with music and I think camp journey is important because you get to learn extra stuff during the summer. I love camp journey because it's really fun. There is a lot to explore. Great. I go to school at Michael I like about um the field. I liked about the field trip for Journey Summer Camp, and the field trip that I liked was the beach because um, we found crabs and collected crabs. And, and the name is Frank Price. Right? Yes. I just want to make sure everybody at home knows these names. Yes, They're going to hear them for many years. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lindsay and William Barner. <laughs> Hi, my name is um, Chelsea Warner, as you, and... I'm in the third grade. I've been going to, um, I go to school at South Street Elementary, and I've been going to summer camp for two years at, um, Crocker Elementary. Okay. My favorite part was going hiking outside in the woods. We would collect things like acorns, like moss, leaves and rocks and when we finally got back we would go straight to the playground okay. and this is william he's in kindergarten at south street <laughs> you tell what you like doing? hello my name is william Barna. i am in south street school elementary uh my teacher is mrs gerard and I went to summer camp for two years. One, one, one year. And my favorite field trip, my favorite part about summer camp was the field trip. The field trip gave us information about See animals. Alright. Great. Great. Right, right. Got two more in the back. Come on up. You want to stand? Yeah. This is Adrian and Kaliana. Adrian's going to speak for the family. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Adrian. Hi, my name is Kaliana Moreno, and I've been in Journey Summer Camp for four years. In Journey Summer Camp, I learned a lot of a lot about the ocean. We learned how littering is not the best for sea animals. Also, how driftwood is so soft and how it is smooth, smoothed by the sand. The field trips helped me understand what we learned because we got to because we got to feel the driftwood and also got to see the sea animals habitat. Very good. So we ran journeys. Can I run the um, yep, yep. slideshow? Just quick. I know we're running out of time. <coughs> no, no. Uh, go ahead. Went through the entire month of July this year, uh, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 12.30. And then on Thursdays, we extended the day till 4 uh, so we could go on field trips and really enjoy them because the year before, we were really crunched. So um, we studied the ocean. We went to um, the Ecotarium in Worcester. We went to the aquarium. In Boston, we went to Winger Sheik Beach, the first time some of our yeah. students got to go to the beach. They had all that wonderful support from the job office helping us um, with chaperones. And then we went to Davis's Farmland also the last week. So all week, all summer long, they were studying the ocean. We used the Roots of Reading Seeds of Science Ocean Unit. And um, they were able to learn a lot Monday through Wednesday and then actually see animals in their habitats and explore them on um, Thursdays. So, uh, do you guys have any questions for any of my friends here? <laughs> well, I have a question. Yeah. So you all went to Winger Sheik Beach? Yes. Uh, everyone here did, yes. So was it surprising how many sand dollars there are there? 
You can just see them all right under there. Did you did you pick any of them up? Mm -hmm. I did. I did. <laughs> and then yeah, they were able to in. take things home. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. Well, thank you. I got to see. I think the at Crocker you had this group that had the forest trail. Uh, that's that's the next group. Rapers. Okay. So this is a different group. So this is a group. I didn't go to the beach. Paul. I uh, went Mr. to the Mr. Quinto beach. went to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yes, Ellie was kind of <laughs> with Mr. Joe Blunt. Yes. All right. And I just a quickie <laughs> comment. All all of you guys, have you seen this slideshow before? Have you seen these slides before? They're pretty great. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, let me tell you, each of you spoke so well to all of us, because I know I know some of you from being at Rheingold and South Street, but you may not know everyone at the table. We are so proud of you. I can feel everyone at this table saying, wow, you did a great job. You really did. Thank you. Thank you to your parents. There are a lot of parents out here. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. I know it means your schedule. You come home from work. You try to feed everybody, get them in a car, drive them here, and then the evening continues. So we really appreciate you coming. And now we're going to have Ms. Terigny is going to come up and talk about Camp Sun. Watch the coin, They Molly. speak better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That little guy mm -hmm. It's interesting that the group that I brought, um, they're all siblings, so if you ask one, they'll <laughs> well, answer for each other. Yeah. Right? Um, <coughs> so, um, the Camp Sun program runs at Crocker Elementary School as well. Find a space. Um, we run along with the Journeys program. We actually share busing. Okay, one of the differences is that our grant, our summer program is funded through the 21st Century After School program. Um, so we have a little bit of different focus. I have a, a great, great appreciation for Ms. Kelly and the field trips that she planned. This was the first year this summer that we planned a field trip. We actually went to um, a place in Shirley that I'm sure a lot of people don't know about, but it's called Far and Near. It's hiking trails, and they have a, a, a pineantum, which is a pine field of hundreds of different types of pine trees. Um, they have open fields. Really? They have a, a beautiful facility. You'll see it in the slideshow. But um, just the logistics of planning a field trip for 106 students um, and making sure that they're all active and busy during the course of the day. We extended one day as well, um, planning lunches and activities. We had a group out hiking with um, the um, wildlife sanctuary people that come in. Um, so they hiked, and then that group would flip-flop with the group that was behind. The group that was behind had some other activities that they were participating in. So um, while I set up the slideshow, each of the girls are going to introduce to you their themselves, and then they'll tell you what activity they participated in. We had nine different activities for them to choose from. They choose two. Um, and then we have another activity, well, at the end of the day, we have what's called a mix it up block. And the reason that we do that is for students that may see something like they may see um, the, the STEM group creating kites, and they don't get a chance to do that because that's not the activity that they sign up for. But in the mix it up block, they can choose that, and that day they can make kites. So I have an amazing staff of um, teachers that work in the program during the school year. They also work in the summer program as well, um, paraprofessionals. Um, we have an inclusive program for all of our students. Um, we, we try to focus on building relationships and a sense of community. We try to keep our group sizes small, one to 10 um, ratio so that the students get a lot of attention, they build a lot of relationships. So they're gonna, there's a good little mix here of all the different activities. So um, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves, they can tell you about which activities they chose and some of their favorite things about <coughs> Camp Sun. Wanna start with Madison, our, our youngest? <laughs> Hi, I'm Madison and I go to, I'm in third grade and I go to Rheingold Elementary School. This was my first year at Camp Sun, and I had a great time. I was in drama and um, creative minds. Um, I learned in drama that you can just be yourself because everyone's safe there. 
And in Creative Minds, I learned that just be creative. Wow, Great. pretty good. Yeah. Next. Um, my name's Devin, and I did Catch the Wind and Garden to Table. And in, like, in um, Catch the Wind, you did, like, um, windmills and anemometers. And um, in Garden to Table, you did gardening and um, cooking. Um, hi, I'm Gracie Cavallo. Um, I've gone to Camp Sun for five years. Um, I go to Memorial Middle School. Um, this year in Camp Sun, I did Drama and Creative Minds. Um, what I liked about drama class was that um, everybody was friendly to each other, and when we had our roles for our script, um, everybody was included and everybody was talking to each other. Um, and you could make new friends. Um, also, in Creative Minds, we would do a lot of activities like painting, and we would learn the science behind art. I'm Bella Cavallo, and I did um, drama and Creative Minds. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, who's next? Um, I'm Lucia Gallo, and <coughs> this year at Camp Sun, I did nature art and slash recycled art, and I did a video project. And with the video project, what we did was make a video for students who are new to the Fitchburg School District to make them feel welcome to their new school. Wow. Great. Hi, my name is Eliza Gallo, and what I did this year for Camp Sun is Garden to Table and Creative Minds. In Garden to Table, we what we basically did is we went to the garden and like we took care of it, and then we went inside to cook. And then in Creative Minds, we like got to like look at these paintings and like art sculptures, and so then we tried to make it make our own. And like we had to see like how it was like like we had to compare it. So yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Kayla Podowski and this year at Camp Sun I was a CIT, so I did a CIT training for one of my blocks and then I helped with technology for the other one. And I liked how we all got to help each other figure out how to help the kids and what we could do to improve their how they like camp sites. Hmm. Hi, my name is Paul Lady and I was also a CIT. I'm an eighth grader at Memorial Middle School and I also ran like I didn't run it like, I helped out doing dance with in drama with Michelle Stone but she wasn't able to make it. Um in C in the CIT program we learned how to like do CPR CPR, and yeah, I feel like I had a lot of fun with some. Like, what, what's CIT? What is it? Counselor in training. Counselor in training. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, so I'm Kyla Gerton. I'm in eighth grade also, and I'm from Memorial Middle School. I was also a CIT, and basically with the CIT, we learned how to like introduce ourselves to the kids, be friendly, and like what will make them like feel more comfortable around us. We also learned how to do first aid and CPR, hmm. and we also learned how to become certified babysitters, which means like we can babysit friends and family, and they can feel safe. And we are also open for like school wide events to help out. Okay. So, I'm Keenan Duval, and I'm a freshman at Fisher High, and I, I was also a CIT this summer. Um, I had a lot of fun being in CIT. We did a lot of things, like they already explained. We became certified in um, CPR and first aid, which um, that was an interesting experience. It was a good thing to learn, I think. Um, and then we learned how to interact with kids, um, you know, do like like um, form relationships with kids and friendships. And um, yeah, it was it was a fun experience. So I'm glad that I did. So part of the 
can't, uh, part of the 21st century requirement is to do service learning projects. So the CIT, the counselor in training, was a service learning. So what they did is they were going to learn the skills to be counselors in training anyways. So they decided while they're learning those skills, they may as well learn what it would be like to be babysitters. So they researched what does that take. And they actually put in more hours than a regular first aid, I mean, a regular um, babysitting course that you would take through an organization. They actually put in 64 total hours. Wow. Um, so they researched, you know, what, what does a zero to three month old need? What does a six to 12 month old need? They actually went down into the preschool and um, observed the younger children. They practiced changing diapers. I mean, they did the whole, um, purpose and they and they also interviewed Eva Kelly to see what the need might be in the in the school community so a lot of times we have family events but they're not well attended as we'd like to because there's younger siblings at home or there may be a need for babysitters so there's 13 students that are now um, trained in babysitting and counselors in training and they can help out at school-wide events so they just um, are available and if you have an event and you think that babysitting might be a need, you can reach out to this group of students. So that was the part of the service learning. The second part, um, there was another service learning project that Lucia was talking about, that um, video that she did, that they did. Um, I'll show you it real quick. It's not even a minute long. This was um, another group of students. They had a curriculum that they had to implement around a service learning project, and they chose to do video production. So they met with um, Bonnie Bear Seamack, and she felt it was a need to welcome students to the district. So. Mm. <laughs> That's great. Good job. That video was also um, in Spanish as well. So there's a Spanish version. It's the same video, but the, it's in spoken in Spanish. And that was the group of students that worked on that. So where is that video housed now? It what is you? on the... Um, the website, okay. I believe, the, um, not the Fitchburg Public Schools, it's on Bonnie's website. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, we need to get it to FATV, because okay. they would they would run that. Okay. Yeah. If I could, Mayor, so the Journeys program services about 100 students in grades K. So we had a class of very young, just turned five-year-old to six-year-olds through third grade and then the 21st cent and that's funded through title one 21st century program uh, kicks it up a notch so the journeys is really an academic program through title one looking at model curriculum uh, strong literacy development and experiences 21st century has um, arts and stem focus and that's grades three through upper elementary, early middle, with a counselor and training program that provides something different for the middle school students. And this year, 106 kids, yeah, yep. 
Uh, both programs are integrated, including special education students with disabilities, second language learners. Um, it's, and we usually have a waiting list for both programs. Questions? I always see um, on the discussing Pittsburgh post people looking for babysitters, and I don't know if there is some kind of a place that people can call the school to get this information, or maybe you can put it on FATV saying that there are certified babysitters and you know contact whatever school they belong to, because there's always people looking for babysitters, you know, for a couple of hours a day, and I mean. If you're certified, who better to take care of somebody's child with a babysitter? The um, the certification that that they that they went through was through the through the 21st century program. So you can do like a first uh, what do they call it? A, what's the word? American Heart Association or one of those programs? You can do it online, but there was a fee related to it. It was like 130 dollars per student to do it. So we looked at what that looked like and then um, Kim Bellio addressed that and more. So it's, it's I don't want to say it's a certification because we don't actually do okay. them, but they, they're, I would say that they're beyond the experience that you would get from taking that class. Okay. Because they did above and beyond. The diapering, the uh -huh. um, of observation, the skills, the research alone on what, what to do with kids books to read at what levels I mean they really they really explored a lot about what it takes to um, care for a child and had the babysit the uh, the CPR <coughs> and choking I mean oh, yeah. one of the school nurses came in and actually had what was called a choke vest so you reach around something and actually do the Heimlich and it spits out a piece of foam so the kids could actually live practice the oh, Heimlich wow. maneuver which was really cool in the CPR, they're all, they're all certified in CPR and first aid. So that's where the certification yeah. comes in. But an actual babysitting certification, yeah, not. Well, I don't know if people are looking for that specifically, but right. just that they've already had mm -hmm. training. And right, I would say that yeah. there's 13 of them, and they're very, very qualified. So I would think, you know, maybe one of the steps that they could have done was to put out a brochure and maybe have that available at the schools. Each student did their own resume oh, that's with great. their experience. Yeah, that's experience. Yeah. 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 So I mean, it's the the experience that they got was really above and beyond. I think it was great. Could I ask? You? Yes. Um, do you, so now that you've done the CIP training, is that it for the camp, or do you, can you come back, or like how does it work? <laughs> um, what happens next year is the students that already went through the CIT training can come back as volunteers if they choose to. We have two students right now that are sophomores in high school that still come <coughs> back and volunteer their time. Um, they went through the CIT program when they were there. So they can come back as volunteers and now they're above and then there's new students like yeah. um, Gracie and Bella who will be going into seventh grade and they'll be becoming CIT. Okay. So it, it's a it kind of repeats itself as it as in some of these um, students have been in the camp for five years now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they look forward to that heat. They like it's something they want to achieve is to become a CIT. Mm -hmm. For the questions. Thank you. Right, well, thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you, you and again. Thanks to the parents for getting you here. Okay. Sure. Congratulations. <laughs> Approval of the minutes of the regular school committee meeting of October third, twenty sixteen. Make a motion. We approve them. Motion second. made to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Yes. We will be going into executive session at the close of the meeting. Uh, any new business? I could ask the superintendent, could our next meeting before the election, could we have 
something about charter schools on the agenda so we could discuss charter schools because there is so much misinformation that is out there uh, it'd be nice to have a, a discussion and so people could learn what's really happening when they talk about charter schools uh, the public schools getting more money well the public charter schools are getting more money but the local schools are losing it all you know just a lot of things that have come up even the sentinel today they had they're looking to pass uh, 12 new charter schools a year and the sentinel said the state uh, could have 120 charter schools and there are only 72 so what's uh, what's that about 48 charter schools that could still be opened in the state of Massachusetts yeah I'll put it on the agenda for yeah. the next agenda yeah I also uh, yeah. Any unfinished business Man. from previous? Oh, oh, oh I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm just wondering at the next um, school building needs meeting. No. I'm not in that um, group, but when we were doing the calling all scarecrows, we realized that um, a lot of the schools did not have uh, sufficient tools to do a lot of the jobs at the schools, like hammers, screwdrivers, things like that, that we were looking for. So I'm wondering if somehow somebody can take an inventory of what the facilities people have to work with and make sure that they have full sets of tools that if something happens that they can do their job I mean we had the most difficult time trying to find a hammer okay you know there used to be a lot of that material but over the years yeah you know, but that, you can't do your job if you don't have the tools and you know, yeah, let me look yeah. into that yeah. because so, it, yeah. it, it doesn't necessarily line up with what <coughs> yeah. with it's what I least. know is yeah. the case. So okay, yeah. all right. Let me look into it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Any any other questions? Uh, communications. Uh, it, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I w was going to suggest. I was going to mention that I'm happy to report that on behalf of the Massachusetts Association of School Committees Board of Directors. Uh, our own Mr. Peter Stevens has uh, been the recipient of the MASACS Division IV All-State School Committee 2016 Award. This mm -hmm. honor recognizes his contributions to the children of Fitchburg, both through your years of service on the school committee and through the many activities in which you have participated as an advocate for children, not to mention all those years as a principal and administrator in the school system. The award will be presented at the MASAC Leadership Awards Dinner on Friday, November 4th, uh, in their joint conference. The dinner is being held at the Resort and Conference Center in Hyannis. We want to congratulate you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you for all that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, how'd you get it? Well, <laughs> I think it had a lot to do with my work with CAPS and special needs students. There you go. There you go. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. That's great. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, I've got a uh, quick communication. So last Thursday at 8.30 in the morning, um, a number of us went to downtown Leominster, where their school committee has indeed just passed a resolution with the exception of their mayor. Their mayor abstained from voting on it. But school committee members there feel very strongly that we do not want more charter schools. And so um, Mike Hurley, myself, Heather Mazzaferro on the school committee, and Natalia Berthe, who works with our public school uh, teachers, we all did a standout in downtown Lemonster. I know folks have jobs, you know, 8.30 in the morning. But we'll be there next Thursday, and then we will be there, uh, I believe that is the, uh, the Thursday, the uh, 27th as well. And after that, we went and spoke to every single business in downtown Lemonster, and the message was simple. If this, if, if, if you don't, if, if, you, if you vote no, you are supporting your town. If this bill passes, well, that's going to affect adversely the public schools, which will adversely affect Lemonster, which will make a difference in your, in your businesses. So we probably talked to 30 separate small businesses, owners, workers, everyone. And we had a couple of, you know, not more than a couple of people saying, wow, I, I hadn't thought about it that way. But that is the truth. If if question th if question two does pass, it will have a devastating effect on Fitchburg schools and subsequently the city of Fitchburg and our surrounding communities. So 
very serious stuff. If you want to come stand out with us, it will be Thursday um, in front of uh, just downtown Lemonster at 830. We did have a wonderful canvas. Uh, Beth was there, Jean was there, um, Pete was there, or no, um, Claudia was there. You were, yeah, at, yeah. you were at alumni. Marisa was there. Marisa. The mayor was there. Juana, you, we, anyway, a bunch, a bunch of us were there. And I think we did something like over 300 houses got spoken to. So that's a lot of good canvassing. And I hope that we can keep this up. I know we're over 180 school committees across the state that say vote no on question two. And thank you, Mr. Stevens, for bringing it up to put on our agenda. Um, we have one more school committee meeting before Election Day. And it's absolutely crucial that the public hear from us. Um, the only coverage the Sentinel has given that has been pro-charter has been from people working for charter school industries. So uh, Great Schools Massachusetts and Sabus Corporation. That's where the editorials came from, not from citizens, not from parents. And that, you're so right. That's why we need the discussion. Uh, the, the superintendent sent us a, another good uh, article on from the conference you just went to. Yeah. Uh, and they talk about, and it also brings up uh, the vocational technical schools. What people don't realize, when we get an assessment from the city, uh, the, the, the uh, vocational technical schools assess the city, and then the city gets a 5% cut in their funding, they still get their assessment. They don't have to make the cuts. You know, the uh, charter schools, they're going to get so much per pupil. Uh, we lose the money, they're still going to get their per pupil expenditure. We have to make the cuts. They don't. We continue to lose money. Uh, from the auditor, uh, for this past year, uh, we got from the state 450000 uh, and we paid out uh, $2.5 million. The difference was like a million eight hundred and fifty thousand. So I'd like to know where that extra money for our local public schools is coming from because we're not getting it. So I, that's why we need this discussion. And I would add that we need the talent of a, a city, right? We want... That's the job of the public schools to educate everybody. And we want people to commit to these public schools. So that's how you make things better. That's how you really raise the bar for everybody. And our schools are great schools. So I think it's just a, it's, it's money, it's talent, it's support for the city, it's support for the kids. It's, it's really committing to what the whole public idea is meant to be. We educate everybody. Well said, everyone. Thank you. I think you all know my position on charter schools. I've been an opponent of additional charter schools in Fitchburg since I was a legislator. So that's not changing, and it will not change. Mr. Superintendent, you, your report, um, recognitions? Just, I think just right on to budget items. All right, good. Thank you. So budget items, we have a donation uh, for our McKinney Bento, which is for our, to help our homeless students. And it is school supplies, backpacks, hygiene items, and it's for $850, uh, and it's from the UMass Health Alliance, uh, the Lemonster campus. Thank you. Uh, then there's a donation of a Singer sewing machine with cabinet and box of approximately 45 schools of thread, very specific, uh, for $125, and that's to be used in the 21st Century program. Uh, and that is um, from... Carolyn. Miss uh, Carolyn Patton uh, of Westminster, Mass. Uh, and then we have um, recommended action, uh, and that is for the, um, this is the grant? Grants. Yep. The grant, uh, and this one is accepting, recommending, recommending a grant, Museum of Tra Science Travel for 1050 and a, museum, a Mass Life Sciences Center grant for 150000 So these are grants that are coming before you to be recommended. You will see on the, um, on the action items, uh, maybe I'll turn to Bob Jokola since he has been the lead on this. Uh, we are going to have solar panels soon. <laughs> so <laughs> if the sun also Knock on rises. plastic or whatever the we're sun talking about. Huh? The sun will rise yeah. tomorrow. Uh, yeah, the city solicitor, uh, Vincent Pusateri, and I have been uh, finalizing the contract with uh, a vendor called Select Energy, who was introduced to the city under the Power Options Program. Uh, we're a Power Options customer. 
uh, this program um, that is approved by the state under which Power Options participates allows members, municipalities, nonprofits to go through an expedited uh, procurement and contractual process to install small scale solar facilities. So um, we've been negotiating for last month or so. Uh, we retained a consultant to make sure we got the best deal possible for the city and uh, we'll be going before the city council tomorrow night to get their blessing uh, as the contract term uh, is 20 years and exceeds the the regular maximum of five years. What time's uh, up tomorrow night, Bob? Seven o'clock. <coughs> um, you know, based on the projections, we estimated <coughs> first year savings of around 90,000 uh, over the lifetime of the projects. Uh, the city could save 2.7, 2.8 million dollars, uh, with an average savings of around 130 thousand. So, uh, you know, it's it's a great opportunity for the city to uh, go green. And when I say go green, this is not only uh, environmentally but also financially. So, I think it's a that's great. It's a good thing for the schools, and I thank the city solicitor. Um, for helping us out on this. Bob's worked closely with Thank city you. purchasing, the city solicitor. Yeah. The, this, the, these, these are very complex uh, yeah. things to work out, and uh, we're glad that we're the finally right there. The solicitor's here tonight, too. I want to thank Bob. You did uh, yeoman's work on this, and as well as the, the solicitor. A.J. Terigny in my office was, uh, mm -hmm. was a participant as well. And, you know, something we can't lose sight of is the projected cost savings can be reallocated to direct student services. Right. It goes back to the kids, right? Yep. That's, that's right. That's, that's the best part. Thanks. That's the best part. Yep. Yep. Right. Thank you. That's really a sunshine fund. Yes. <laughs> um, we have uh, just uh, to people out there who may not remember, um, quite a few years ago now, Bonnie Bear, CMAC, our ELL director, worked with mm -hmm. a group of teachers and uh, created some curriculum units that were uh, purchased by Pearson Publishing, and uh, we get these royalty checks on a regular basis. Uh, and we're uh, receiving a royalty check tonight for four hundred and seven dollars and eighty-one cents, which you need to Good. receive and approve. Um, then uh, we're asking you to make an allocation of school choice funds. We were contacted by. Uh, John Thompson from South Street Elementary Schools. They were in need of some chairs. Um, so we're purchasing 100 Columbia adjustable stack chairs for South Street at a cost of $3,556, and that would be from School Choice. You have uh, the approval of a policy, a, a drug, alcohol, and tobacco policy, which was discussed earlier on your action items also, and that's it. Thank you. May I just yes. ask a clarifying yes. question about the policy? Um, so just in the uh, back part of, it, it, um, of the policy, the second page, it says that um, the materials, the curriculum, the instruction materials should be recommended by the superintendent and approved by the school committee. So does that, I mean, I, I understand that this is really more just the framework of needing that kind of policy. Uh, is that is any of that changing the curriculum or the instructional materials? That's all the same right. material we have in place, right? Okay. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Where are we? Curriculum and instruction. Public testimony. Is there any public testimony? Seeing none. We're voting on the action items. You want to take them? Together? 738, 739 can be together. Mm -hmm. All right. Make a motion. Motion made to approve. Second. 16738, 16739. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed is unanimous. 16740. Motion to Museum Second. of Science Traveling Program grant. Is motion to accept? Second. Motion made and seconded to accept. All in favor? Aye. All opposed is unanimous. Approve super recommendation to endorse the execution of a 20-year purchase power agreement. Motion. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed is unanimous. Approve the superintendent's recommendation to accept 
$407.07 of royalty for Pearson Education. Motion to accept. Motion made and seconded to accept. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 16743, superintendent recommendation to invest up to three million five hundred and sixty. Three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. I added a zero, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Or two. <laughs> school choice funds with <laughs> Just remember Do we that have that much in school choice? I think we do, don't we? <laughs> Re remember that when you're doing our budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Zero. Okay. I'll add a couple of zeros, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Purposes of 100 Columbia adjustable stack chairs. Oh, motion to buy. All right, all motion made, seconded. All in favor? Okay, approve the superintendent recommendation to the teaching. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, sure. So this is uh, so uh, policy subcommittee um, motion to ex, uh, sorry motion to pass the teaching and intervention drugs, alcohol, and tobacco um, policy. Motion. Motion made. Second. Okay, all, yep. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. aye and now. Aye. Um, Mr. Chair, go go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all set. The, the yeah. last on the on Three the agenda, sixteen seven forty five, superintendent's oh, record. No, oh, no, 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 we have to oh. do forty four. I thought we just did. No, no, no that, that was, was, that was that the subcommittee. Yeah. Oh. The committee now we got to do. Oh, that, that was the subcommittee. Okay. Yeah. To approve the superintendent recommendation to approve the teaching and intervention of drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. Motion. Uh, second. Motion made, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Aye. Now the last one. Yeah. 16745. Superintendent. I make a motion to pay the bill. All right. All right. right. Motion made. <laughs> seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we're now going to adjourn to convene make an executive motion. session. Make, make a motion. We're going to executive okay. session. Motion for the purpose made. Of Litigation, right, and uh, only to return to adjourn. Exactly. Yeah. Motion made. Second. Mo made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed. Yeah. All right. Do we have two individual? Do we need to? Yeah. Roll, call. Roll, call. roll call. Roll call. Yes. 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 Unanimous. Are we staying here or no, are we going in there?